Here we are with the Excel Chapter 5 capstone exercise called Travel. Uh, I've got step number one done because I have my file open. So I'm going to move right into step two. So uh, it notes here that before we're going to use the subtotal command, uh, we got to do some work. So on the subtotals worksheet, so I've got to switch over there. Um, Sort the data by employee and then category, both in alphabetical order. Okay, so I'm going to click into my data area, data, and then sort. So the first level is supposed to be employee, and uh, which seems weird because, oh, pardon me, employee, picked the wrong one. There we go, A to Z, and then we're supposed to do category. Hit OK. All right, everything seems to be sorted. We're done. Step two. Step three, we're going to subtotal our data. So we're going to use the subtotal feature. So I'm still in the data tab. Hit subtotal. And um, we're told to do it by employee to calculate the total expense by employee. OK, so at each change in employee, we want the total expense, so I'm going to do a sum, and we want total expense. Okay, so it's every change in employee gets us the total expense. So I hit OK. All right, so it looks like each employee change gives us the total here. Cool. It's formatted weird because of the column order, but it is what it is. So that's it for step three. Now we want to hide the details for two employees and focus on the details for the remaining employees. So we're going to collapse Davidson and Miller, showing only their totals. Okay, so here's Davidson. I'm going to hit the minus here to collapse Davidson. And we also have to collapse Miller. So let me find Miller. Here's Miller's total. Collapse that. So now we're just left with the rest. So that's it for step four. Step five. Uh, we want to do a more uh, in-depth analysis, so we are going to create a pivot table. So we're going to use the expenses worksheet for this and create a blank pivot table on a new worksheet named summary. Okay, so I'll click on my data, hit insert, and pivot table. So we've got our data automatically selected, new worksheet, awesome. I'm going to hit OK. And we're supposed to name that worksheet as summary. And we're supposed to name the pivot table categories. OK, so I've clicked on my pivot table. And then on the Analyze tab, we've got our name here. So this is categories. OK. Uh, so that's it for step five. Step six. You want to include the category and expense fields in the pivot table. So use the category and expense fields enabling Excel to determine where the fields go in the pivot table. Okay, so if you want to leave it up to Excel, and let me move my face over again so it's not on the area that matters, uh, just click the check boxes next to what you want. So we're supposed to do category. So I hit the check box there, and then we're supposed to do expenses. All right, so Excel figured out, okay, well, it makes more sense to have the uh, each row be the category and then expenses afterwards. And it's doing a sum of the expenses. So that's it for step six. Step seven, we want to display average expenses instead of totals. So we're going to modify the values field to determine the average expense by category. So to modify the values field, go down in the values area where it has sum of expense. Do the value field settings. And we're told that we want to do average. So let's do average. And then change the custom name to average expense. So this is our custom name here. So we're basically just getting rid of the of. Okay. And we're good there. So I can see already in step eight that we need to format this field. So I'm going to go into the formatting now. And it should be accounting number type. So I'm going to pull accounting, hit OK, and OK. So now it's average accounting format, and everything is good. You can see our custom name has worked as well. So that's seven and eight. Step nine, 
We want to display a meaningful label and select a different layout. Okay, so uh, type category in A3. So that's where it says row label. We're going to do category. And then we're going to change the grand totals uh, layout option to on for rows only. So what this is doing, so if we go to our pivot table tools and design, um, there's this grand totals box here. So this is this reflects this, what we're doing with this grand total line. So if I click on this, I've got options. So I just want my mine to be on rows only so I'll click that and it gets rid of that grand total on my pivot chart without having to try and manually delete anything so that's it for step nine uh, next we're going to apply a light blue pivot style dark two and display banded rows so we'll stay in the design area i'm going to grab my pivot table styles and it's supposed to be dark two that be this one. Make sure the name matches. Light blue, pivot style, dark blue. Perfect. And then display banded rows. So that's our checkboxes here, and you can click banded rows, and it'll change how these rows look. So you can see it may alternates light dark as we move down the table. That's it for step 10. We're on the next page. Uh, so now to make it easier to filter our pivot table results, we're going to insert and format a slicer. Slicers are pretty cool. So we're going to insert a slicer for the employee field. So to do that, we go into our pivot table tools and analyze. And you can see in the near the middle here, insert a slicer. So I'll click on that. And then we have to choose what we want the slicer to apply to. So we want it to apply to the employee field. So I'll check that and we'll hit OK. And now we have a slicer, which is basically a visual representation of a filter. So we need to change the slicer height to two inches. So if you're on the slicer options here, height, we can change to two right here. So I'll do that, shrinks it up nicely. We're then going to apply the light blue slicer style dark five. So still in slicer tools options, we'll go to the styles down arrow and dark five which is probably this one yes it is and then we want to move the slicer so the upper left hand corner is in a10 so i'm just going to click and drag here go to a10 close enough okay so now we have our slicer in a11 or a10 we're done step 11 uh, we move on without using it, so this is not part of the exercise, but this is uh, what I'm going to show you. So, this is for everybody, because everybody's name is highlighted. If I just click Abbott, only the data from that person will show. Hart, Overton, etc. If I click on this button, multi-select, I can choose more than one person at a time, and I can unselect people as I click them like that. Um, or I can clear stuff by clicking here, and it goes back to how it was to begin with. So that is how you use a slicer, and it enables you to visually filter quite quickly and uh, makes your data more understandable. Okay, so step 12, we want to insert another pivot table to analyze the data on the expenses worksheet. So I'm going to go to expenses, have my data, um, uh, my cursor in the data insert and pivot table so uh, this one's going to be put on a new sheet called total so i want it on a new sheet hit ok and rename that totals um, we're going to name the pivot table employees so on the pivot table tools analyze it's going to be called employees and then it, we're told how to populate our pivot table. So add the employees to the rows. Okay, so employees to the rows. And then add expense to values. Okay, so expense down in values. All right. Um, sort the pivot table from largest to smallest. Okay, so this is a hard one to find. But if you click on one of your items and you right click on it, 
you'll find sort in that menu. Uh, and you want to go, in this case, from largest to smallest based on the instruction. So I'll do that. And now we'll see it's sorted our uh, stuff by the largest to smallest of the number. So that's it for step 12. Step 13, change the name to the expenses column to totals. Okay, so let's do that. Expenses column will be called totals. And uh, format the field with accounting number format. So you could do it here, or you can also do it here. So I'm going to do it here, value field settings, number format, and accounting. So it's just stuff we've done before. All right, so that looks good. That's it for step 13. Step 14, insert a calculated field to subtract 265972 from the totals field. Um, and then it tells us the custom name. So if your data does not have a calculation included that you want to do, you can create it within your pivot table framework. So we're going to go about doing that now. And so if you're on your pivot table tools, analyze where it says fields, items, and sets, we'll click on that and we'll do a calculated field. So here's where you can name it. So we want the, um, so we'll, let's do the formula first. So let's get rid of what's in there. And we want to subtract a number from totals. So I can, um, from the totals field, which was expense. It hasn't updated for whatever reason, but expense here. So I can go insert. And that is basically whatever this is, column is. And then subtract 2659.72. So that's my formula. And then it tells me to change the name to above or below average. Okay, so what that means to me is that the 2659 must be the average amount. Uh, we also want to apply accounting number format to that. So I'll hit okay first. It inserts it for us. Uh, then we need to right click so we can get, whoop, it's not letting me right click for whatever reason. Let's try again. There, we, or not a right click, a, a normal click. That was my problem. Value field settings, show values, Oop. number format is what I want. So I want uh, accounting number format and doesn't dictate the decimal, so I assume two is fine. So I'll hit OK, and there we go. So that's it for 14. Uh, 15, we're going to set our column width, so uh, 10.86 for B, okay, B column width, 10.86. Uh, and then 13.71 for C, 13.71. Okay, and then change row height of row 3 to 30, okay, row height. 30. All right. Uh, and then apply word wrap to cell C3. All right. So I'm going to word wrap this. And I'm going to get rid of this sum of because I don't think that's appropriate. We'll see if it lets us. Yeah. So it's, it's giving me some goofy things where uh, you can't change that. I'm not really sure why. We'll just leave it be. Uh, so that's it for step 15. Now, in step 16, we're going to create a pivot chart with this. Uh, so we're going to create a custom, cl clustered column uh, pivot chart. So I'm going to click in my chart somewhere, Analyze tab, and then Pivot Chart. All right, clustered column is the one selected. I'll hit OK because that's what I want. And then we want to move our chart. So if I go to the uh, design tab, I can hit move chart. You can also do this by right clicking both work. So I'm going to move this to a new sheet and that new sheet is going to be called chart. All right, so I'll hit OK. Now we're here. So the next thing it says is hide all field buttons from the pivot chart. So we've got field buttons here and here and here. If we want to hide them. We go to analyze in our pivot chart tools and we can unclick the main button area for field buttons and now they're gone perfect so step 16 is done 
Step 17, add a chart title and type expenses by employees. Okay, so that's in our pivot chart tools design. Add chart element, chart title, and we want it above the chart, so that's perfect. And I just need to start typing expenses by employee. All right. Next, we need to change this chart style to style 14. So find it here, start style 14. Okay. And step 17 says note, Mac users continue on the next continue on to the next step. So I assume something in this step doesn't work for you. So just carry on as is. So next is step 18. Apply 11 point font size to the value axis. Okay, so I'm gonna click on the value axis and I'm just gonna do it on the home tab, bump it up to 11 and display the axis as accounting with zero decimal places. So I'm gonna double click on my axis to get my chart options. And I'm going to minimize this axis options because I know my formatting is in the number category. And it says we want accounting, good, zero decimal places. So I'll update that. All right. Uh, so that's it for 18. Uh, so I don't need to modify my chart anymore. So I'm going to close this. The last thing is to, uh, or the second last thing, is to create a footer on all worksheets with your name, sheet code, and file name code. So I'm going to click on my first chart, my first uh, sheet, and then hold down shift and click on the last page layout, page setup dialog, header footer, custom footer. And we've been doing this for decades now. Sheet code, file code. Okay, okay. Perfect. And that's it for step 19. Step 20, ensure that the worksheets are correctly named and placed in the following order. So subtotals, then summary, then chart, then totals, then expenses. Cool, so they're in the right order and I've spelled everything right. So that's it for step 20. And then step 21 is just save and close. So we're done.